Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of the Hambini Engineering Show which if today is a Sunday might be called Hambini Sunday Roast The Return. In today's episode all the way from Denmark yes that well-known suburb of Germany just over the border from Flensburg where I've been multiple times to get my driving license endorsed we have Ceramic Speed, and I have called this presentation Ceramic Speed, higher price does not necessarily equal higher performance. Um, by Hambini, aged five, let us check to see if that most important peripheral, the pen, is working. I'm joined up. Really good hand movement today. I've been exercising it. Mm -mm. Anyway, right, yes, the uh, uh, that's a not equal to sign. Remember to hit me up on habini.com, Instacrap, and Patreon um, if you want to support the channel. Right, my um, Instacrap and social media all got lit up by all of this stuff, which was this, which is the ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel with a fairing round it. Um, now, I got this pick from Bike Rumor, and this is actually a pretty good pick because it's got an X-ray through it. So this this is your normal pulley cage with a fairing, although it's not apparently a fairing, it's structural uh, around it. Now these white things, there was some speculation as to whether they were vortex generators. I don't think they are. I think it's just paint or um, stickers, whatever. Um, so they are on it. Uh, so this has been raced by, I think his name's Cameron Worth, um, in the Ironman Championships. And it's been all over the press and some people said, can you have a look at it? So, you know, I don't need two opportunities to have a look at something like this. Right, bit of background. What is Ceramic Speed? So Ceramic Speed is a company from Denmark and I have got this this is their website and I clicked on um, you know who they were and there's this guy called Jacob Jakob I can't even pronounce that is that a silent C? Sismadia Chismadia I don't know anyway apparently he was into inline skating uh, and then he went to ride a bike and um, from there he thought he would sell some bearings so I don't think he's got an engineering background, um, but there you go. Now I did find this web page quite fascinating because they do actually hand make their bearings by the looks of it. So there's this guy with some tweezers, or it could be a girl with some tweezers, and they put balls into the hole. Anyway, uh, and they are based in Holsterbro, and they're into ceramic bearings. Now they used to be proud sponsors on GCN until I harpooned them. Um, so myself and John Cannings, John Cannings asked me what do I think of ceramic bearings and I said it was like trying to drive a locomotive on the road because the ceramic bearing is really hard, the road surface isn't and it cuts it up and it's true it cuts a groove um, but they didn't really like that right. Oh yes so I've said that. Right the other element of this is Drag to Zero. So Drag to Zero is a company based in the UK around Brackley. So Brackley is where Mercedes um, Motorsport or AMG F1 is based. And the other people around there, Milton Keynes is Red Bull. Um, Williams is in Didcot um, in Oxfordshire. Or was it Grove? I can't remember. Somewhere around there. Um, anyway, they're all you know ex motorsports. So Simon Smart, he used to be in F1. And I think he used to work for Jordan and maybe Stewart, um, who became Jaguar, and then finally Red Bull. And from I reckon about 2008, 2009, he left there and then went to work for himself as Drag to Zero. Um, now it is. Well, on the face of it, it looks like a very profitable business because I went and checked the accounts for that company. So you can go and check on Companies House, um, which is the government website in the UK. And I found, I, couldn't, I thought I was dreaming when I saw it, but he has got, 
Well, the company has got £975,000, around about $1.2 million, sitting there in the bank. Um, now, I wasn't sure if you know, you've been paid for a job and then you, you've, you've got some outgoings after that, but he had £909,000 the year before. So there you go. It was two, two uh, um, directors of that company, so Simon Smart and uh, someone Atkins, I think. Anyway, we digress. Right, there are some technical challenges to putting a fairing or a cover round a pulley cage. Um, there's some mechanical issues or challenges and there's some aerodynamic challenges. We've also got the UCI structural rule which basically says, and I keep calling it a fairing, uh, you're not allowed to have a fairing round it. It has to be part of the structure. So that, that is what that is. Um, right, mechanical losses. So you've got You've got a large pulley in there, and the large pulley has a, a mechanical loss. You've got a mechanical gain because they claim there's um, less, less of an acute angle uh, for the chain to articulate around, but you've also got a very small bearing in there. So if I was to draw the bearings there, and you can see the spokes go you know, there and there. So the diameter of that big pulley wheel is like that. Um, which comes to this. So if you have um, like a small bearing with the chain, so we're just taking a slice through um, the, the back pulley wheel, you've got a, a torque, which is, or a moment, some people will call it a moment, um, which is trying to twist the pulley wheel laterally. When you make the pulley wheel much bigger, that counter torque or the, the rotational torque in the axial direction becomes much bigger um, because the force is applied at this distance as opposed to this distance. Now the effect that has is that will axially load that bearing and you'll get much more drag. It becomes very apparent when you are at the extremities of the cassette. So if you're on the very small end of the cassette or the very big end of the cassette you have the chain angle and the corresponding torque trying to keep it in line or to rotate it um, at the extremities so that that is not um, a good thing right the aero problems and these are a lot more problematic if you ask me um, you've got articulation aero losses now when I was reading the blurbage through various comments on and weight weenies and bike room in the posts no one really talks about that you've also got some mixing losses and the cage itself is mounted in dirty air so what are the you know the, the losses that I'm referring to they're predominantly and you can visibly see it here there's there's cutouts um, so the, the the cutout is there so there's nothing there so it's basically a hole and you've also got this, which is also a cutout. Now, if you um, go and look at the reasons why you've got these cutouts, um, it becomes obvious when you camp the thing over. So when the derailleur uh, has moved and you've rotated this, so I've made the back picture go um, light and then rotated the bottom pulley cage wheel round. So you can see the, the angle is the chain, or the chain angle's changed because it was originally here. Um, and you are now operating your chain through that cutout there, and that sort of cutout at the top is required to give you the articulation so it doesn't foul on the bottom of the, the rest of the mech. Um, now the cage retracted, so in this position, so um, it's probably the most aerodynamic because you've got the least frontal area, uh, and that big hole at the bottom is masked as much as possible. Um, and also the big hole at the back is also masked uh, as much as possible but you're only likely to be in that position at low speed so it's counter productive now the mixing losses so what I've done here is this is just an aerofoil section um, here so if we've got the air coming towards it like that ideal is you know you've seen it all before like that when you've got this setup which is effectively what you've got in certain areas of this. So if you were to take a slit through here, 
you would probably have a section that looks like that. Um, so when the airflow comes around like that and like that. Now in here you've got some velocity, some air that's that's filled in there at some pressure, and it will join here. Just so it will join the airflow at that point, and that's called a mixing loss. So around there you've got possibly high pressure, slow moving air that was sort of built up inside the cage, uh, joining this fast moving air that's literally just going straight over. Now. When inside there, you've got air that is basically filling the cavity, it has to. Uh, so it typically you'd get air that comes in here through this gap into there. And then in there it slows down uh, and its pressure increases. And then you've got the mixing loss through there. So I'm being fairly anal there. Uh, and then you've got this, which is, is essentially a waste of time. And that is through here. So if you look through there, you've, you've got a section that looks like that. So that that bit there is that bit there, and that bit there is that bit there. And you've got all the mechanical bits in here to really screw your airflow up. And this is uh, this shot at the back is the airflow, uh, is the shot of the bike from behind, and you can see the, the gap here. So there's nothing there. Okay, um, and then further down, you see the chain comes through, so it's obviously a hole through there, so it's it's got to come through there, so hence it looks like that. Um, typically you call that unsealed surfaces, and it is a big uh, loss. Um, it's because you've got high pressure and low pressure mixed together, so if you took an aircraft, um, if we're looking at it from front, you've got low pressure on the top of the wing, and high pressure on the, top of the, uh, on the bottom of the wing, um, at the edges, usually have some winglets and the objective of them is to try and seal the low pressure and the high pressure away from each other because um, normally what will happen is the airflow will do that which is why you get tip vortices being shed um, so as aircraft come into land right aerodynamics uh, there are some gains to be had here um, I mean the main one is you know the, the gubbins in there are all hidden. Yeah, you've got this, I keep calling it a fairing, but the cover uh, ahead of it, so it's it's all you know well well covered. Um, so there is a gain to be had there. But one of the things that it makes this largely pointless is where it is mounted. So it is mounted. I mean if I just if I was to draw the other the pedal at the other side it probably comes about there with the guy's foot, let's say there. Yeah. The, the, the shoe may be looking like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm maybe drawing this exaggerated. It will completely trash the airflow going into there. It will become very, very dirty. So you can't use, or you, well, you could use, but you'd have a hard time justifying um, any sort of standard procedure for measuring the drag there. What I've kind of done is I've drawn you scenarios on the right hand side. So look, this is scenario one. So we take a very, very aerodynamic object, which is this NACA air, airfoil, uh, and we place a blunt object in front of it. So this could be the guy's shoe. So airflow comes around here, goes around there, bump. Same thing here, round here, bump. So you've got this very aerodynamic object in an area where the airflow or air speed is very, very low. I mean, it is, there's going to be a bit of turbulence in there, but in a sense, it's going to be very, very low. Now, if you have the same thing, scenario two, which is the same foot, and instead of having a perfectly aerodynamic shape, you've got a bluff body um, and I've given it a CD of two um, you've still got the same thing so what I'm really trying to say is the drag differential between having the aerodynamic object behind something that's yeah not very aerodynamic or having a, a 
air, an unaerodynamic job object behind something that's not very aerodynamic isn't going to make a difference. It's it's basically because the the airspeed in here is zero or very close. It's very very small, and I mean the surface area of this or the frontal area of this is very very small in comparison to the rest of your bike. So you know. My hand probably has, in profile, probably has the same surface area. Now, if you were to go and put this into mathematical terms for the bell ends and twat bags out there, this is what's happening. And me, from the aerodynamical purist point of view, it, it is kind of, you know, it, if you are going to make something aerodynamic, the key, you know, and you're not worried about control surfaces and all that kind of stuff, the key is to get rid of it. Okay, so to make the frontal area as close to zero as you can get it. This is the drag equation. This is a simplified drag equation. So this is the drag force. This is the drag coefficient. This entire term here is called dynamic pressure. And then W times H is your frontal area. So width times height. In order to make drag as small as possible, you need to get these variables as low as possible. So if I take each of these in turn, CD is that versus that, okay, half rho v squared. So <laughs> the best thing here is to go uh, run the bike in a vacuum, because if you do that, you won't have any drag, or get your v term very low. So if you if if you are going at you know two miles an hour or t twenty mi uh, yeah twenty k's. Your actual V, localized V around the OSPW is, is quite small, so it's not really going to make much difference. But, and the purists, and I am the purist, will always go for this method. Always. Because this is something, A, that you can control, right, and it's not affected by anything else. If you make the object as small as possible, then the drag will be minimized. So, th there are, you know, some, some sometimes you offset this WH term, wow, God, where's the pen gone? This WH or the area term, some people use S for CD. Now, a prime example of that will be an aerodynamic helmet because the helmet for TT racing is, is bigger than your head, but the CD has reduced it more than the increase in surface area. So that's why, you know, some it doesn't work all the time, but within reason... I mean, there's a big difference between your head versus your head in an aerodynamic body that looks like a you know a teardrop shape. But here, you got all these things that are not in your favour. So there we go. Right, small print warning. Now I put this in because a lot of people have actually flagged this up. So ceramic speed operate a minimised minimum advertised pricing policy so if you go and buy ceramic speed products they tend to fix the price across all their resellers um i'm not sure whether that's legal or not now uh i uh i don't have the knowledge to know if that's you know permitted or not but you know that they do that the other bit and this is uh, this this is always a bit of a ropey area is they cover their things for a lifetime warranty, but it doesn't cover general wear and tear. A ceramic bearing, the likelihood of failure um, on a bike is mainly due to the vibration that you get. So it's 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 rock hard against a fairly you know, soft surface. Now they can put some coatings on to make it a bit harder, but it is only the very, very edge of the surface the bulk of it is still metal uh, so yeah you need to worry about that especially if it's eight hundred dollars right so overall now it is likely to be faster than without the fairing now I'm, I'm guessing that because you've also got some extra things because there's an extra weight of the chain there's that drag from the bearing friction um so but but it's of their own making because they put these massive pulley wheels in there. So there you go. Um, and then I mean, this alludes to the, the point. You are probably more likely to find easier to find unicorn shit than to be able to calculate the gain from this pulley. It's that small. 
it's eight hundred dollars. Now, if you are that way inclined, you know you could spend clothing. Go and spend your money on that. Then the wheels, handlebars, and then the frame. Um, or you could, you know, go and have a nice time in an FKK club. Uh, and I mean, it's a very clean execution. If if someone came to me and said, "Can you?" make a fairing or a cover round uh, a bully cage I don't think I could have done much better than what they've done um, but it's, it's a pointless product it's a completely pointless product because I, the gut feel in me says that it's positioned in a point where the airflow is so dirty that you're not going to get any benefit or yeah, it's just that I mean, and this was the title of the um the, the presentation so if you buy something with a higher price you expect higher performance and I think that's the business model that they operate on now if it was me and the aim was to get the drag down I would go for a standard cage so the standard Shimano cage with I think it's a 688 I can't remember it might be a 608 C2 clearance bearing oil for the lubrication because it is consistent and you can measure it um, and it'll give you a drag reduction uh, C2 clearance because in that area you, you don't want it to rock so much because the rocking will um, slow you down. That's it. Now if you've got any questions or comments um, then please do use the box below. There'll be more stuff on Hambini.com. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe. Also check me out on Patreon. Uh, please comment below. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. If you did enjoy it remember to smash that like button and if you didn't go fuck yourself. And as always, keep banging your hairdresser.